Hi, everyone. This is Matt St. John. Thank you for joining today's webinar. Uh, this is the TPAC 2020 uh, After Party. So today, we're going to show you Starship's integration to Sage 300. Real quick, a little bit about V Technologies. Uh, we've been developing integrated shipping solutions since 1989. Uh, we are actually located in Connecticut, and all of our support, sales, development, so on and so forth, is done in house. So we're not outsourcing anything. Uh, we are a UPS ready provider as well as a platinum FedEx compatible solution. Uh, we've been working with the Sage product line for over 20 years now. And of course, we are a Sage certified solution as well as a Sage Gold development um, vendor, I should say, or ISV. And we are currently about have, have about 10,000 customers that use our integrated shipping solutions to process their shipments. So a little bit about that integration with Sage 300. Uh, really plug and play, it's bi-directional. Uh, really our interface, as you're gonna see in the demo, is going to offer a variety of different workflows. And I'll get, on, and get into that on the demo and we'll discuss that a little bit further. But really plug and play um, interface that makes shipping faster, easier, and of course with less area errors, as you're gonna see, we can really help automate the whole shipment process. Uh, we do integrate with um, many carriers, so about oh, two dozen, over two dozen now, and that's Parcel as well as LTL. And with Starship, one of the nice things is as a shipper, I can actually just work in the Starship program. So technically, I don't need access to 300. Uh, again, as a shipper, I, on my shipping workstation, probably out in the warehouse, I can just have Starship installed. And it's going to be kind of one stop. Uh, from Starship, one user interface, I can process my LTL shipments parcel shipments, I can do international shipments, um, getting ahead myself, but we can even get into integrating with e-commerce sites or, or shopping carts. Uh, so e-commerce sites like Amazon, uh, Magento for shopping cart, Shopify, WooCommerce, uh, so on and so forth. So with those integrations, my nice thing is we can actually take shipping information and of course pass it back into 300, but we can also upload it into um, the e-commerce site or even on a shopping cart okay and, uh, as you see the starship program also can be customized so we can get up get into custom freight rules uh printing rules uh, ship via rules and again in the demo i'll dive deeper into all the customization uh, edi integration uh, full integration with edi solutions as you see if we're using trading partners that require a GS1128 label, Starship can actually generate that right at time of shipment. So now I know some clients, hey, currently, oh, if we're doing EDI, you know, we have to get that information up to the EDI provider, then they provide the, the 128 label. And by the time that's all done, our shipper's already been out in the warehouse processing multiple shipments. So nice thing with Starship generating a 128 label, um, what's gonna happen right at time of that shipment. So, hey, I'm getting this pallet out, or I'm sending out this box, I'm going to have that 128 label along with all my other required information. So boxes are still right there, pallets still right in front of me. Um, I don't have to wait for the where or for the front office to bring that information or bring that 128 label back to me. But with that integration, of course, once I ship and process, Starship's going to send all that required information for an EDI order back into 300 and our integration with EDI. They're going to then grab that information, upload it to your trading partners, you know, for ASN generation, so on and so forth. All right. And our, our support, uh, you know, every time I go to shows, that's what I hear. People come up to me and I get a little nervous, and but it's uh, all your support's great. So, um, you know, they've been working with the products for many, many, many years. Uh, not only Starship, but they also have backgrounds in the ERP systems as well. Okay. With Starship, we do fully support. Uh, about over a dozen ERP systems. So again, we've been around for 33 years and, and integrated shipping is all we do. Okay, so this slide, just again, just a snapshot of some of those integrations that we have with carriers, as you see, Parcel, LTL, um, and with Starship, with that live integration to a carrier, so with like a UPS, a Purolator, uh, even LTL carriers, uh, we're going to be able to return live negotiator rates. So it's the live contract rate. So I don't have to call the carrier to find out how much the, the shipment's going to cost. Uh, so live rates, no staging tables. You know, tomorrow, if UPS up the fuel charge, when we rate shop, Starship's going to bring in those new updated rates. Uh, the integration's also other 
offer other features like for a course for say a parcel shipment going to return that uh, tracking number uh, pro numbers for LTL carriers electronic pickup so we're going to notify them that we have a, a shipment ready to go so again if it's an LTL shipment I don't have to call the carrier and say oh hey I got a package ready to go uh, we of course fully support really a lot of prospects come to us they're using FedEx uh, ship manager UPS world ship workflow is really going to be the same uh, we support all the same options so the shipment options even if customers have additional contract options through the carriers uh, we support those as well because again it's that live connection we're just pinging the carrier they're returning all your contract information including those negotiated rates okay so with that i'm gonna jump out of here and go on my demo machine we can start the starship demo so here is the Starship program. So as I mentioned earlier, as a shipper, I can actually just work inside of the Starship program. So here, I just gonna uh, sort by this shipment number field um, up top with those different workflows. As you see, I can go by sales order numbers, customer number, shipment number, invoice number. So these are my source documents. So this is what I'm gonna tell Starship to look at inside of 300. Um, now, in the process of maybe I'm using a sales order number, I can most certainly pull that in. What, as you're gonna see, Starship's gonna bring in all the order header, line item detail. Uh, inside Starship, when, once I ship and process that order, of course, as a shipper, I'm gonna receive my shipping documents. And then behind the scenes, what Starship's gonna do is send back all the shipment information. And if I'm pulling by sales order number, we will also automatically create the shipment record inside of 300. So um, if some clients were looking to, we could kind of save that step, you know, if they're manually going in and creating that shipment. Um, of course, again, if I pull by sales order number, Starship would automatically create that shipment record with all the required shipment information in it. Okay, so for the sake of demo, I'm just gonna pull by shipment, uh, make it easy. And up top here is our shipment or source field. So if I happen to have my pick sheet or whatever I'm shipping against barcoded with that information, I can even use a, a regular wedge type plug and play scanner and just scan in this information. And then of course Starship would load all, all the, the order or shipment data. Now up top here, I can get into implying filter. So here I have a filter by ship date. You know, we can filter by really any of these column fields in this drop down. Um, so if we want to narrow that search result, we can get into doing that. Uh, even this lookup grid with all the columns, you know, I, I can, I have a lot checked here, but I can narrow that search results or what displays there. And that's by user login. So each, each of my shipper, Starship shippers can have the kind of their own look and feel to the Starship program. Um, another feature of Starship over here is just a group related order. So I can check this. And as you see here, this is now telling me, oh, I see that you have six orders going to the same ship to here in San Diego, California. Uh, so what I can do is simply, and I even drill down this way, or collect this one checkbox, but it's gonna allow me to consolidate all these orders into one shipment. So I'm gonna help kind of save time, save money on that shipment process. And again, I'll just deselect that. Um, so any of these columns I can sort by. So again, I already sorted by the shipment number. Um, in, in this case, I'm going to do this as a manual process where I'm going to look for my shipment. Again, we could scan that or manually type that in up top. I could click this checkbox and then click create shipment or even manually go over here and get this out of my way here and just click this little truck icon. And again, what Starship's doing, simply data mapping the fields from Sage 300, bringing in the shipment or sales order information. Um, so simple data map. As you see up top, here's my source information. So coming from Sage 300, the company, uh, out of the box, Starship does fully support multiple companies, multiple locations. Here's my order number. Here's my sender information. So again, just based off of the sender information from inside the sample company. Uh, now, if we have clients that are doing drop shipments or anyone needs to do blind shipments, um, as you see, I can drill down into the sender and maybe I'm shipping this for Walmart and they need it to show that it's coming from Walmart. I can come in here and manually select that drop down. Now, with the dating mapping fields, of course, we can streamline this process and we can tell Starship to maybe look at um, a custom field or some other field inside of 300 to actually automatically select this for my shipper. So 
really is you're going to see the name of the game with Starship is to help streamline the shipping process. So less things I have to touch, click, um, you know, change as a shipper, the better. Okay. Let me just make sure I grab the right company and information there. It's a customer. Things. Okay. Um, recipient information. So Starship will do address validation. We do validate zip plus four. So we're going to help save on address correction fees. Uh, transportation, simply mapping this from the ship via. So my ship via here is UPS ground. And as you see, as a shipper, I don't have to click or change anything. It's come in. It's UPS. Now I, I did say my ship via was UPS ground. So as you see, you can even set up default international services for just a standard ship via UPS ground. So maybe I don't want to in, inside of Sage have to have a ship via UPS ground, uh, UPS standard to Canada. Um, I could just do like I'm doing in my case, hey, my ship via is UPS ground. Starship knows if it's in an international shipment, automatically change it to UPS standard to Canada. Okay. So again, just streamlining that shipment process. Uh, billing information, anyone doing third party or collect shipments, the system can be set up that this automatically is selected. And then Starship has its own database where customer account information can be set up and stored. And that can be the address information, their account numbers. And again, this would just be a drop down here. As you see, I have a couple here. I could have this set up that, oh, again, it's for Walmart. We're shipping on their account. I don't want to touch any of that. So this could automatically have Starship automatically populate all this information. Okay, so let's change that back to prepaid. Um, and we'll drill out of here. Shipment options or shipment details, let's jump over there first. I really just all my, my shipment options. Uh, so again, I could have insurance. Maybe I want Starship to look at a field inside of Sage to automatically select that for certain shipments. You know, we have clients that do insurance and then we also automatically populate the declared value. And that could be based off of, you know, I have some that uh, just do it off the sales order total. Or maybe we don't only want to base it off the value of the shipment total of what we're shipping. Uh, so we can do that. Um, here I have Quantum View, which is the carrier generated email. So yeah, it's already selected. So we can default these uh, selections as well. I'm pulling in an email address. Uh, here I have it set to send one as ship uh, anytime this is shipped. So use UPS as email. A lot of our clients, they'll actually set up their systems and use the carrier generated emails for exceptions or delays only. And I'll show you how they, why they do that in a little bit. Um, also up here, as you see, I have department serial number and field one, two, three, four, five. These are actually user defined fields. So inside of Starship, uh, we have unlimited user defined fields. As you see, they live on the shipment record, uh, order record. So we have them in all different spots. Um, here, you know, by standard, they're just named this, but of course we can change them. And again, we can take additional information from Sage, bring it into Starship, maybe into a user-defined field. Uh, shipment statuses, that's just the shipment status. Uh, if this was like an LTL shipment, uh, I could, in, a lot of times this is where this comes into play, but even for a parcel shipment, maybe sometimes we want to, uh, nah, I want to process this, but I don't want UPS to pick it up today. So I could change that ready date. Uh, an LTL shipment, I can actually change the ready date as well as the time. Uh, so I do have some clients, again, you know, same thing. Oh, if I process a shipment first thing in the morning, the trucking company, because again, Starship's going to notify them, hey, they have something ready to go. You know, they might be here within an hour because they're right down the street. Uh, so they, they can get in there and actually change the pickup time. Okay. So packaging information. So this is where I can get into that order header, or sorry, line item, detail, item box. Uh, again, if this was an LTL shipment, be able to do item box, box pallet detail. Uh, but first off, item to box detail or package detail is not a requirement inside Starship. And of course, I would at least have to have the weight to process the shipment, but Starship's not going to throw an error if I try to process something without an actual item in there. All right. So my system here, one thing that's happening with this desk light is this, there's a packaging scenario. So Starship knows that every time I ship a desk light, it goes into a box that I've called large. Okay, so it's automatically packaged. Now, my system is also set up that if there's no packaging scenarios, my items drop into Starship's default custom package. So from there, maybe I know this halogen bulb. Oh, we can also put that into the large box. Simple drag and drop. Now, maybe this custom package, oh, the notebook, 
I know that can go in a medium box. Okay, so this drop down, this is just part of Starship's database where you can set up and store your own custom packaging. And that can be boxes, bags, bales, pallets, what have you. But the nice thing with using custom packaging is the dimensions are automatically going to populate. Right. If I looked at it as custom, I can manually type in the dimensions. But um, over back on this side, here's the quantity. So if we allow our shippers to maybe back order items, I could change the quantity. And I'm right back. Starship's going to update the quantity, you know, whatever selected inside of Starship. So if I back order something, it would back order the shipment record. Um, now, actual weights, my system, I'm grabbing weights that are set up inside of Stage 300. Of course, I can manually type in weights. If I had a scale that was integrated and connected, Starship would automatically grab the weight from the scale. So as you see, we have actual weight, but right next to her, we have bill weight. And people always ask, hey, what, what's the difference? So bill weight, in Starship's terms, is the actual dimensional weight. If you're unaware, carriers now between UPS, FedEx, even USPS, they charge by the dimension. So we're not so much as how heavy the box is, but how much real estate we are taking up on the truck. I always kind of blame LCD, uh, flat screen TVs for this because, you know, they're cheap now. They order a big 60 inch TV, might only weigh 10 pounds. Um, it's only 10 pounds, but it's taken up a lot of real estate on the, on the truck. So they charge by dimension. So Starship will actually do the calculation based off the carrier's calculation because they do differ. And when we process this shipment, it is going to send it out at the 19 pounds. Okay. So later on, customers aren't going to get that bill that says, Oh, you know, you sent that one box out at seven. It should have been 19. Here's the difference. All right. So again, item box detail, not a requirement. Um, but as you see, things, items can be packaged. Uh, integrations with WMS, we can, uh, you know, however we define that on a WMS. So maybe I'm using a handheld device. I already prepackaged this. You know, of course, that's how Starship would bring that information in. So that's the standard packaging view. We also have a, a packaging assistant wizard up here that, you know, again, if I didn't package this, I could have my items over on the left-hand side. And same thing over on the right-hand side, add boxes, drag and drop items to build my shipment. And then from there, I can simply click ship and process. But I'll just jump back to the main Starship screen. Scroll up here. Uh, line item detail. So this, of course, is that line items from the sales order from the shipment record. And I always show this because I'm going to drill down into an item. So what Starship's going to do is we like to start automatically storing inventory items. And we do this because, uh, for example, freight class, NMFT code. You no, know, maybe we're not storing that inside of 300. So Starship has its own database that, again, it can automatically grab information from. So as a shipper, I don't have to stop and populate that, manually select it, or click on it. Okay, so there's the freight class, especially for international shipments in this case, we're going to Canada here. So we can store country manufacturer, the harmonized code or schedule B codes. As you see, I have my own lookup. I can even do queries and, and filter these lookups. But point being is if this item was missing that, Starship would alert me. I can quickly come in here as a shipper, you know, look up that harmonized code, select it. And then when I, after I process this, Next time this order comes in with this line item, it's all that information automatically going to populate. Okay. And again, if any of this information is actually living inside a 300, we have clients that maybe have custom fields or they have it stored somewhere. Uh, it's very simple with Starship. We just change the data map field. Okay. We don't have to get into doing custom program. We simply get behind the scenes and we say, okay, you know, Starship for the harmonized code, I want you to look at a uh, fax number field, for example, or, you know, maybe a comment line. Okay, but very easy to, you know, to make changes and customize the program for our customers. Okay. Now, down below is the live rating. So here, as you see, I have uh, UPS and FedEx uh, set up. So I'm actually seeing my list. Those are live published list rates. Contract, those would be my live negotiator rates. And as you see here, demo accounts, they're the same, but normally our contract rates would be lower. Um, and then we have applied charges. So in Starship terms, applied charges is simply plus or minus any freight rules. So with Starship, we can get into setting up freight rules where, uh, for example, hey, maybe certain customers receive a 10% discount on, on the freight. And that could be based off of list charge or contract charge. 
Uh, those trigger fields, you know, I, like I said, customer, it could go all the way down to line item detail. So I do have clients that, hey, we ship fragile ad items. So they do anytime an order, anytime item one, two, three is on an order, automatically add a flat rate of $5 because we have to use additional bubble wrap to help, you know, protect that. So let's help cover that cost for that additional bubble wrap material or packaging material. So pack, uh, freight rules can be percentages, min, max, flat rates. Again, we can look at customers all the way down to line item detail, even custom fields as well to use for those triggers. Now, with the rating, you know, I kind of scrolled down, did a manual process here. As you see, I have a pack of rate shop scenario. And really what this scenario is doing, it's limiting the carriers that's displaying. Um, and by limiting, I mean, I'm not, because I have LTL carriers, this is a parcel shipment. I don't want to see LTL carriers. So I have a rule that just says, okay, you know, I think I did it by weight where if it's under 150 pounds, just show me my parcel shipment. Um, so I can come down, it's automatically run it, but I can take this a step further and I can even just have Starship, okay, you automatically rate, but now I also want you to automatically select uh, maybe the least expensive carrier service or least expensive, least amount of business days in this case. Right, so that whole rating process can be automated as well. So we could have customers that ship deals are just best way. When it comes in, this will be blank. Starship automatically rates, picks the carrier based off of their their ship via rules. Okay, so that that is a ship via rule. Uh, so we do have clients do that. I have clients, you know, they they ship chocolate, so they they actually have a trigger field that anytime it's over 70 degrees out, they Starship is only allowed to select two days or less services. Okay, so that whole process, again, can be automated uh, with Starship. Again, name of the game, streamline that shipping process, less things as shipper I have to click, touch, select, the better. Now, of course, for the demo here, we, I really dragged out this shipment showing you all the options, uh, but again, going to select our source document, order's going to come in, you know, maybe I'm going to do item box detail, maybe I'm going to come down and do some rating, but when I'm ready, I can click the shipping process button or up top here in the shipment dropdown. As you see, we have shortcut keys. I can stage an order. Maybe I just want to save it so I can save it, come back to it later. I can do the full-blown shipping process. Maybe I also need a return label. I can do ship and create a return label at the same time. So here, we're just going to do the ship and return. Now, live environment, of course, Starship is going to start automatically generating our shipment documents. As you're going to see here in my demo system, they're just going to preview, um, just so you could see them all. And of course, I'm also using this document here. As you see, it, it is a shipping label and packing list together. So this is what we call our smart label. Uh, now, most certainly, we can send shipping labels to thermal printers. Um, I have customers, hey, UPS FedEx labels are different sizes. So we can tell Starship where to send each of our documents. All right, UPS goes to this thermal printer. FedEx labels go to that different uh, thermal printer. Our packing list, um, that option's there. We can send that to a thermal printer. Of course, we can send it to a laser printer, or maybe we just want to save it as a PDF to a network share. Uh, we can do that with all the different documents. Now, that's box one. Here's my package two. As you see, my shipping packing list here is also customized. So for all the documents, we allow clients to set up unlimited templates so they can customize each of the documents. And on each template, also assign printing rules. So again, maybe this was for Walmart and Walmart wants their logo on a packing list. Uh, simply set up a template, that's for Walmart, apply that rule, and then Starship would only generate that document or set of documents if the shipment was for say Walmart. Now, this was an international shipment, so Starship can generate, in this case, the commercial invoice. So this, by default, all the order header, line item inf information gonna populate. And mine, I've just customized so it's signed and dated. So again, as a shipper, I don't have to stop and let me sign this and date it. Now, with UPS, even FedEx, for international shipments, we also fully support letting them handle the documents. So that is an electronic feature option we, we do support. Uh, if this was an LTL shipment, our ship can generate bill lading forms, pallet labels, so on and so forth. So again, help that shipment process, generate all the documents, and again, with this uh, certificate of origin, there's my sign, dated, ready to go. I don't have to stop and touch anything, okay? So what I'll do, I'll just close out of all these documents here, and I'll jump back 
uh, to Starship. So again, shipper clicks shipping process, they get their shipping documents. Now they just go back to this main screen uh, and they move on, select the next shipment, go through that process again. All right, so I'll just switch over to my Sage VM. So here is shipping data entry. And as I mentioned earlier, even, even though I, even if I should say, I pulled by a sales order number, um, Starship's still gonna create that shipment record. Um, in this case, we did go just by shipment to shipment, but here is the shipment record that order shipment, I should say 229, the one we just processed. Okay. So first off, there's our tracking information, writing back that on the tracking line. We, for freight amounts, gonna write back to a miscellaneous line item. Customers select the miscellaneous. It doesn't have to be TF in this case. Uh, so up to you what you wanna use for that miscellaneous code. And then totals tab, here's again that freight amount write back. Uh, we can also then, if clients want, as you see, I'm writing back a note to this comment, and it's up to the customer what they want to send back. So I'm just kind of sending back some you know, ship date, estimated delivery date. I think I put uh, whoever was logged in here, you know, all that information. So shipped on as well. Okay. So that, there's the write back. Again, very simple, very easy, uh, smooth workflow. Now, also with Starship, you know, we do give customers and i'm just going to switch over here i'll drop down here we'll first start out with e-notify uh, so our e-notify program this is included does not require any additional seats or licenses for starship so with starship of course we do need a seater license to log into the program our seats are concurrent just like sage so i could have starship on say 10 machines but if i did only have two licenses i could only have two shippers inside starship processing shipments at the same time Okay, but again, e-notify, I'm also going to show you our dashboard program. We even have an outside standalone rate shop module uh, that it, it, same look and feel as Starship where maybe I want my front office to be able to rate shop. So that's also included and requires no additional seats or licenses. But here with e-notify, this allows our customers to design their own custom email template. So as you see here, you can build my brand awareness. Um, and this is why a lot of our clients, they do the carrier generated for only exceptions or delays because they create their own. It's branded their company, not UPS, not FedEx, but very easy to create these. Pull in stage fields. See, I got PO number, sales order number, letting them know, hey, it's coming by UPS, where it's going to, let them know the packages, estimated delivery date that's coming from the carrier. So it is accurate. And then here, as you see, if I'm doing item to box detail inside Starship, you can actually show my customers that oh, you should expect two packages. Package one are these two items. Package two is the desk notebook. Hyperlink tracking numbers. You send them right back to the carrier's website. All right, so customers use these. Uh, honestly, they, they do come back and say, yeah, these really help reduce those inbound calls of customers calling up looking for shipments. Okay. Now, just like the printing documents, can set up unlimited templates. And instead of printing rules, we can do emailing rules for these email documents. So here I've done a 20% off promo code, which I can hyperlink that, get my customers right back to my website. But maybe I only want this to go to certain customers. So I can just create a template, set, set up that rule, you know, hey, only send it to my gold customers. Starship, of course, would automatically only send those to those, or these to those customers. Right. So that's e-notify, I'll just X out of that. Uh, right now, this is our dashboard program. So this is the newer version of our dashboard program. Uh, you see here, we even added a heat map so I can actually kind of come in here and, and see where my hot spots are. Um, again, this is available to all users. So most clients, everyone in the front office has dashboard. And um, again, I just have a heat map here. I, I just go over here and up some views but these views can be based off of user login so i can kind of customize this to my own look and feel but you know here's just some overview uh charts that i put in here you know shipments order process um, you can see i can get into history and status uh, ship voided shipped and then i want to drill down and get further information i can oops, do that as well so here's all that order information where it went so on and so forth um, top statistics, 
All right. So really, as you see, Starship dashboard program, reporting tool, matrix that gives the front office the power to track shipments, run reports, uh, so on and so forth. Okay. All right. Um, so again, that's really, I know I'm a little early here. Um, really what I wanted to show everyone, what I'll do is jump back to my other machine here and put up my contact information yeah, so everyone can see that. And like I said, please feel free to reach out to me. And if you have any other questions, concerns, want to schedule a one-on-one -on -one demo, uh, discovery call with clients, more than happy to do that. Uh, or even just work with your team uh, to show them the integration. And let me see if there's any questions. Um, currently do not see any questions. Um, so again, I know I freed up some time out of your day, uh, but really appreciate everyone taking time out of their day for this webinar. Um, and uh, probably be doing these more often than not, so stay tuned for the next one. Again, everyone, thank you so much. I hope you have a great day.